Riveting content, empowering your life. Welcome to The Sphere. This episode is sponsored by Houston Housewives of Finance. For more information on increasing your cash flow, becoming your own money manager, and to schedule your complimentary personal finance strategy, contact the Houston Housewives of Finance today at 1-844-700-4463. Elite Dental Wellness. At Elite Dental Wellness, Dr. Ashandra Batiste understands that one of the biggest obstacles is dental fear. The vision at Elite Dental Wellness is to ensure every patient is treated with respect, ultimate care, patience, and love. Call us today to make an appointment at area code 713-789-8680. Looking to advertise? Join the Sphere's vast demographic reach of thousands of people all over the world. Send an email today to advertise at the sphere.tv or call us at area code 832 772 Good evening, and thank you for joining us for Society Now, a show that brings you riveting content and groundbreaking stories. It's ensure to inspire and give you all the things that you need to be successful in life. This, I am your host, Kira Laws, and you can follow me on Instagram at the Modern Day Cindy, and you can know this beautiful <laughs> woman over here. I She's love amazing. her on so many our levels. Like her introduction is in our studio. And as it's always, amazing. but like this is so good. Hey, everybody. My name is Allison Bullock. You can follow me on Instagram at Miranda Inc. Um, and actually on Facebook because uh, I never Come really kind of shoot it up. But Facebook? On Facebook at Instagram. I mean, um, at Allison Bullock, which is actually, you know, my name. So just go ahead and send oh, me a request okay. and I'll go ahead so and uh, I'll follow you. So. Um, welcome to all of our Facebook Lives um, followers. We absolutely, of course, know, love you. We want you to put your input because it's really important to us. Um, don't forget to subscribe, review, share, and definitely do not forget to donate to The Sphere at www.thesphere.tv backslash donate. So it's been a heck of a week, everybody, as we all know. And we got some good, good, some good, good stuff for you guys uh, this week. Uh, Kira, you want to go ahead and take it away? I'm going to take it away and bring it back. Bring it I'm back. I'm bringing it back. Okay, so um, amazing thing. So I don't know how many people out there actually saw the movie Girls Trip, and it was great. It, it was, was really so, good. so good. It was and really good. And I'm not good. necessarily a movie goer. I get a lot of flack from my family, my husband specifically, because I don't really like going to the movies. <clears> I am a homebody. I, I will rent a movie in a she minute. Will rent a movie. And sit and watch it, because I just like the We'll be like, let's go to the movie. She'll be like... No, but I like, enjoy, you know, every now and then I enjoy going to a movie and I'm so excited that one of the leading ladies from Girls Trip is actually coming out um, is in um, and partnered with Dr. Holly Carter. I don't know if you guys know who Dr. Holly Carter is, but she's amazing. She's a mogul and she and um, Queen Latifah are producing um, a biblical based movie called the scroll which is going to be on fox mm -hmm. and i'm excited about that because queen yeah. latifah is known to actually dig her um background in production and you know into um projects that are considered to be very much interesting i mean i'm excited for her because she's she's so diverse right she's been an um, amazing rapper she's mm -hmm. you know done talk shows she's never been um slacking when it comes to acting so i'm so excited to see what this project is going to look like for her no i agree you know it's the queen you know there has not been really any negative things said about her and even the roles that she's taken it's all been pretty solid so we really really like her um, so we just salute her and we just know that this movie is going to be good. But on another end, for those makeup crazed people, uh, Sephora, it's got some craziness going on in Sephora. Just a little. Uh, it's a little. I, I, you know, I go to Sephora for certain things. Of I mean, I'm, I'm very specific when I go shopping, and I know every store has a different thing for me. We're going to work on that because if I get everything in one store, oh, wouldn't that be great? That'd be great. But it's not always like that. So there I is do one go to store that's my go to, though. 
Well, yeah, yeah but there's friend, it doesn't it doesn't have it does not everything. Have, no, in it it. We're not going to even mention the store because it doesn't have <laughs> everything. But so in Sephora, there was a little drama, and a woman felt like she was, um, I guess, attacked and or racially profiled. She said um, because she was shopping while black, and one of the customers, I'm excuse me, one of the workers there, um, actually accused her of um shoplifting shoplifting or something to the uh, a sort and so i guess a friend of hers pulled out her video camera started recording um that in- instance and at the end of it of course the young lady says hey i'm from the hood and of course it comes with a, i have black friends now you know i um i don't want to spend too much time on this because again this is not about that it's just it is it's it's more about you know the young lady was in Sephora and I think maybe you know her rebuttal to her when she says you know hey you know you don't know my life type thing I don't know exactly how she said it but pretty much I don't have to steal from Sephora and the lady her rebuttal is I'm from the hood and I have black friends it's kind of like why did you say that you don't have to say that you don't have to say like I would never say I have white friends I do have white friends but I don't have to say it like that doesn't make me I don't acceptable if that makes sense. Like I have friends that I happen not to be black. They are white, Indian, Asian, and I love them all. And I don't have to qualify them by their ethnicity. And so we talked about this before the show. Um, You got to be really careful. Uh, And I think that sometimes when people don't know what to say, it's like, well, I'm going to pull that card. I have a black friend, so I'm not going to, this is not what I mean. Versus just kind of, do it like a bow out gracefully because sometimes you really don't know what the best thing to say when you don't know what to say is nothing i agree especially in situations like this it's a different environment it's a different climate and you know it's kind of like hey if if, if it was an era like hey you know i thought you were shoplifting my bad it wasn't the case shopping while black kind of it is what it is oh my god my brother my brother joined us hey look who came oh my god my brother has i don't think he's ever seen this show live so welcome i'm so happy to see him online (laughs) but um so yeah so it it, this particular story again is jarring only because you know while the woman was being recorded and i don't know if she felt like she needed to say that because she was being recorded right but you know you don't again you don't have to prove your you know, your hoodness or your accepting. I don't know what the word would be for this, but you don't no, have to say you really the correct terminology is your hoodness, your hoodness by saying your hoodness. I'm from the hood and I have black friends. Like you don't even have to say you're from the hood. Like what the hood is relative right now. The hood is relative because the hood is everywhere. everywhere. It's not a specific it's, it's hood not one that qualifies place. Like the hood, hood is, is the ever, hood. The hood is the hood. It, hood is in the nicest places. I mean, the hood is the hood, right? So, okay, let's talk about something else. Finally, forgiveness. So I thought this was really an enduring st- story. Um, it was a guy who actually um, in 1968 or so, he um, was a part of a basketball team at his local high school mm-hmm. and they, were, they went to compete in a, in a specific place and they didn't allow the black players to go. Yeah. Um, and here it is 56 years later. One of the team members wrote him a letter and said, I'm so sorry for how we treated you guys. Jeez. I'm so sorry. You have no idea how that tore me up. And apparently, apparently it wasn't just him. A group of some of the other team um, team members that were still alive got together to some type of reunion type deal and was like they felt all these years of guilt and they said we should write all the players. It was just three of them, I believe. All the players letters expressing that we weren't fueled with hatred toward them. And the guy says, hey, I appreciate that, but I didn't even look at it like that because at the time, that's what that that's was my, just, that was the world. That, that was the world in. that yeah. we lived in. So I never looked at it as you were being ugly toward me. Yeah. But he was like to the guy on the, the wrote the letter. He was like that just touched his heart. But he yeah. was like, I needed to release that because I've been walking around with that guilt for so long. So you know what? So here on society now, anytime it's something that we really feel like a person has gone over, we go ahead and just give him a clap. We yeah, appreciate it. We, we appreciate it. it. The producer and clap. It. Everybody clap. clap. And the reason being is because so many people in today's society are like, you know what? Racism is everywhere. We're never going to get ahead. And you guys, this is another salute to small steps. It's a small it's step. It's a small step. In the right it, direction. But it is a step in the right direction. And I think that that deserves applaud. Kudos to everyone who was like, you know what? Like, yo, it may have been okay for the times because it was socially acceptable, but... 
my conscience still doesn't sit right with that. I want to apologize to you. And especially with the way the climate is now. Oh, so that was going to be my you know next comment. I mean? Because now here, here they're, they're reflecting on what they're seeing in 2017, 2016, 2015, and, yeah. and earlier. And they're like, here it is so many years later, and we're still seeing this type of thing being played out. Were we compliant with that? Were, yeah. we, were, were we the part of that, the cycle that's happening right now? So I applaud these guys, and I appreciate them yeah, doing that. Yeah, let's go that. ahead one more time for your mind. Let's yeah, that it. was we amazing. <laughs> oh, that is so funny. Okay, so now um, I don't know. Well, Fox, oh, is, Fox. Fox News. Oh, Fox. Um, this media conglomerate has had so many issues in the Jeez, past. Please, and now one of their hosts of Fox News, Eric Boiling, is actually suspended because his accusation that he texted someone inappropriately pictures of his genitalia. <laughs> Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> it's, I mean, I'm sorry, you guys. I'm not trying to make you light are, of this. It is. But this is. It is funny, right? But in like, a weird way, because I'm kind of like I would never, right? I, I, I mean, I, I'm a, I'm a woman, right? But I don't think it's. I don't really think. I don't believe in sexting. Period. Dot. I just think it's inappropriate. Wait, but Kira, we have talked about this time and time again on shows about what why people feel the need to express some really personal things. things on, on your phone. Yeah. I Texas can be traced, y'all. Yeah, it's kind of like... That cloud mess? You see what I'm like, saying? People are like, what's in the cloud? Everything. Everything is in the cloud. Everything's in the cloud, right? And the cloud can be penetrated, y'all. <laughs> and I, No pun intended. No pun intended. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, rain comes out the cloud, right? I'm not trying to be... You are so inappropriate right now. <laughs> She's so inappropriate. Wildly inappropriate. But no, seriously, so I think it's, I mean, there's something, there's something happening Ooh. at Fox. It's a really a shakeup because it seems like um, catch a break. these, you know, they can't catch a break when it comes to these type of allegations. So hopefully they have some type of, um, they go through some transitions, some trainings and things like that so that they can um, better maybe even rebrand the network because it seems like the network is um, in need of a rebranding. What are your thoughts on that? I agree. Um, you know, Fox, this is not the first. I don't want to pick on Fox because it seems like they just haven't, this hasn't been the best year as far as employee relations yeah. uh, for Fox. And it seems like it may be some restructure that needs to happen. Absolutely. Or they maybe even a consultant. They need a facelift they or a consultant to come in to, you know, give them some sound advice on Absolutely. how to rebrand themselves. But talking about uh, rebranding, um, this portion of your show is sponsored by the one and only Houston Housewives of come Finance. On, housewives. We love them so much. They Did are you know amazing. that only four states in the United States offer financial education? 33% are more than 77 million of Americans do not pay their bills on time. 39% of Ameri Americans carry credit card debt from month to month. And 39% of adults say that they don't have enough in their savings do not become one of these statistics let houston housewives of finance advise you on increasing your cash flow and becoming your own money manager by scheduling your complimentary personal financial strategy contact houston housewives of finance today at 1-844-700-4463 or email them at info at houston housewives of finance.com ask how you can participate in a complimentary financial literacy workshop near you houston housewives of finance are the new face of the new age of financial services. We absolutely love Houston Housewives of we Finance. They are love them fantastic. They're amazing. So if you are really trying to get everything together. Um, so with that being said, we thank you so much for all of our Facebook Live oh, uh, joiners. it's ending so it's soon. It's ending. It is uh, I don't farewell, adieu, soon. but maybe just see you next time, right? Because there's ways that you can actually see this show. So because sad. guess what? We are family. Dun, 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 dun. You're supposed I got to. all my sisters. Thank you. Me. Come I was on. I was waiting I mean, for the, like, my didn't entry. Even come through with it. No, I I'm singing it on court. You, oh. you don't understand. See, see, oh, see oh, this is oh, oh oh oh. If you knew the song, you oh, knew I would uh, come in at the I, right time. I can't come. You can't come. Not I earlier. I was doing a new rhythm. No, I was no, doing a no. new rhythm. This is not the remix. Oh, she did it. It's not the remix. So with that being said, don't be sad. Don't forget to don't subscribe on all of our major platforms, so including pretty. iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, and Stitcher. Stitcher. Review our iTunes, our, our show on iTunes, and give us constructive feedback. We really, really, really need it. We really want your input. We really want to know what we're doing good. She's really serious about that. the input. I, I am. Like, she, I'm always I pulling for should, reviews. But this is the thing. I, like, I, we're but good. A, but this is the thing. I was taught by a really wise person that no news is good news. Well, honey, then we must be doing real good.
Um, so with that being said, don't forget to share um, the entire show with your friends and your family. And don't forget to donate to the mission to bring enriching and inspiring content content each and every week you can donate at www.thesphere.tv backslash donate we love you guys so much take care and have an awesome one until next time see you okay so let's talk about something else that i thought was really interesting in the news really really interesting um and it may not be you know this is a deeper dive we might not be able to go that deep on the dive on this one but so i was reading and it talks about keisha cole and she's talking about why she still lives with her ex-husband um daniel gibson they still live together yes and her reasoning is that because she didn't know her biological father growing up and she thinks it's it's important for her son to have a strong bond with his father and she thinks that it's best if they're in all in the same household so they won't be separated um, there's so many levels of conversation that we can go to with that. And I think it's great that she's willing to, um, make those type of, uh, decisions be- for, in the interest of the child. But I also, I also think about what also is, is the sacrifice for her as a single mom. Cause she's still a single mom cause they're not married. And for him as a single dad, even though you're living in the same home, like how does that affect your relationships? How does it affect your ability? You know what I mean? How are you managing that? Yeah. And that goes to so many levels because again, she's saying the part of her reason is because she did not have that relationship with her father. And this is like a circle that she's trying to, or a cycle that she's trying to eradicate, making sure that even though the parents aren't together, that the, the child still feels the presence of the dad in the home. So, you know, I'm going to be really quick with this because this is one of our society seconds. You got, so again, this is my personal opinion. Number one, kudos uh, to Keisha because I know her intent is, you know what, two parent home. Um, but I think that, again, I don't know the dynamics of how they are in the house, but typically those that want to have a two parent home are living together, showing that the relationship of love and support, not only that they have for the child, but also for one another. It's a solid one, right? So it's a solid. So literally it's a family. It's not mommy has a boyfriend or mommy has a, is dating someone seriously. And kids are smart. My goddaughter whoop, 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 whoop. Is, is about to be two in September and she picks up on stuff. When mm-hmm. I walk into a room now, before I walk, I'm all the way in it. She says, she says my husband's name mm-hmm. and cause she knows that, that you that's guys are I'm together. Mm-hmm. So, and she's not even two. So, you know, you gotta be really careful when you, ha- again, I don't know the dynamics. This is, this is just me on people that I've known that have tried something similar and it didn't work out because at the end of the day, they weren't living one collective life. There were three people, two of the people were living two to- two separate lives individually as far as romantically, but together they came to together for the child. And sometimes it's almost like, well, what's the point of being together? Because the, in my opinion, the point of being in a household together is mommy loves daddy, daddy loves mommy. We work through it. You know, we're a family. And in addition to us giving support to the child, we're also supporting one another. Again, I don't know the dynamics in the house because they may have a, a rule where they don't bring, you know, other people inside the house or they have a, open relationship i i don't know but i i find it i've never had that situation but i think that that's one a a a new age approach it is a new age it's a new age and and, and again like we um we noted the intention of it is great i don't want to downplay the intention of it. the intention of it is absolutely um great i i um i pray that they can um find ways to manage it um as they're you know trying to, to try to foresee um areas where it could be problematic as he grows up you know what i mean because there's i mean but that's a you know and it doesn't that doesn't mean this particular situation is problematic because you can have um challenges even if you're married together with your spouse yeah with the kids so it's not saying that this is indicative of anything the negative that could possibly happen it's just that they're gonna have to really pre-plan for that and i'm I'm hoping that with the situation they thought about all those scenarios and considered it so i just thought it was interesting okay so Something else that is equally interesting on a different level is a woman out of Ohio. Her name was Valerie Spool. Learned um, a secret um, recently that her husband, who had recently been deceased, was also her father. Now yeah. that takes marrying your daddy to ne- another level. Um, she, you know, she was unaware of this was happening. She didn't know that, wow. you know, when she met him. Um, years before that there was a father her father now she's just now coming out talking about the situation and it wasn't until 1998 
that a relative came and told her the truth about the situation. Now they've had kids together, grandkids and everything else. But again, he's deceased at this point when she finds out. So there's not really much they can do. We should talk about this a little bit more. But first, let's go to our break. This portion of the show is sponsored by Elite Dental Wellness. At Elite Dental Wellness, our, ver our vision is to create a welcoming practice that will offer exceptional dental care and a lifetime of dental wellness. We are committed to the finest possible oral care and the overall health and well-being of our patients. Elite Dental Wellness is built upon a foundation of integrity, expertise, and service. Through our commitment to modern dentistry, continued education, and friendly atmosphere, we strive to make our patients feel that they are a part of our family. Dentistry can be scary, daunting, and uncomfortable. Dr. Baptiste and her team work tirelessly to ensure your comfort. Make your appointment today with Dr. Ashandra Baptiste at Elite Dental Wellness at 713-789-8680. Again, the number is 713-789-8680. Come on, Elite Dental Wellness. We love Elite Dental we love Wellness. Them. We do. But okay, so back to this story. Man. I, I can't imagine marrying someone for all of those years. They they are pat they pass away and another family member actually finally comes to tell you, Okay, by the way, that was your dad. Like why didn't you tell me that earlier on? Why did why would you keep that from me? Why would you you know, and now she's suffering from the embarrassment the heartache of other people actually in the community knowing, but nobody ever really said anything to her. Like mm -hmm. that was, they, you know, it was speculated like, Hey, isn't that the same guy that her mom was dating when her mom got pregnant? And so it's just really sad, S you know? So let's say this and, you know, I love the conversations that we have off, uh, offline that we can actually bring, you know, we talk about a lot of infidelity that happens in the United States that a lot of people don't talk about. Mm -hmm. People who are marrying and, and having in sexual intercourse with brothers, sisters, cousins, all of that kind of stuff, some knowingly, and there's a lot of people unknowingly. Yeah. Um, I know it's, it's a common joke in Louisiana, seriously, where it's like, you know, everybody's family, like literally somehow everybody's intertwined. Well, that's not the thing is, it's not really a joke because when you think about and I'm about to go a little deep, just okay. stay go, with go me, ahead. stay I'm on the you. shore in case you need to pull me out. Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. You think about how what happened when we were when our ancestors were brought from Africa and how the, the families were divided so many times. You know what I mean? Even when they became um, when they came here and even the families being separated from each other sold off into different places there's n it's probably not far from the truth that everyone actually is related in some way because you the families were broken families were actually broken up so you might have someone like yourself who lived in louisiana but i could have been your sister yep and i could have been moved to somewhere else to georgia you know what i mean but we would have never known we were related and then here we go we start our own life mm -hmm. and now you have people with starting their own families their own um, last names and things like that and technically we really all could be related in some way or shape or form um somehow um through a tribal relationship generations back so no so i think that it's actually quite true the statement yeah but it is. but you don't want it to happen like this because now we're in a modern age right yeah. where we actually are aware of hey you are my father you know what i mean or like hey. just like that and it wasn't it wasn't that her mom was in a situation where she was molested or raped or anything like yeah. that I'm, I'm not getting that from that story and if that's part of the story please forgive me but no, but, but this is just you know just you know additional things yeah so it's, it's more of a this happened and she didn't know and she wound up marrying her dad and yeah. that's really unfortunate in terms of the psychological she trauma that it incurred but she's like she doesn't regret of course her kids or her grandkids they're all well but it how does that play out in terms of the family yeah it's a lot it's a lot, it's a lot. so on a lighter note you know, we love OWN, right? Come on, Oprah Winfrey Network. We love Network. OWN, and there's some new show. There's a new show on OWN. Um, so while examining the relationship with the black community, the show takes a hard uh, look uh, and dedication of what uh, they can do to make a difference. It shows couples with different dynamics and how they make it work without shying away uh, and being honest um, and open about a true the true to life challenges. So I think this is kind of like OWN's own spin of reality TV done in a i'm going to call it done in a o way because we know that everything that oprah uh, winfrey has a, uh, has tied herself to um has been positive uh for the most part and and in 
inviting and invoking right and and one thing that's going to make this show amazing is that it actually takes a look at couples that we're aware of and one of the couples are the devon franklin and megan good Good. and so you know and they in their relationship they have um documented their relationship and their process through books Mm -hmm. through a book tour speaking engagement so it'll be great to see how they manage through a um, actual docu-series and talk about love specifically black love and black relationships because i think because of of the history of the African American race, there is some there are additional challenges there when it comes to the the male and the female coming together to make that relationship work. So I think it's a great it's going to be a great great docu series. I'm excited about it. Now let's talk about what else has been going on, and this is kind of you know on something else. So I, this is a sad one, um, but I wanted to bring it up. Um, it's a man who I'm um, actually in Texas, Cedar Hill, Texas, which is a little suburb mm-hmm. in the Dallas area. Yeah. Young man um, who just was married um, and married to um, his wife, winded up driving to Ohio with her dead body in his trunk. The issue with the story is that he is saying that he was unaware that that's where her body was, although he didn't know where she was. But he drove from Texas to Ohio um and said that he did not know where his wife is and apparently when he got there that's when he figured out she was in a trunk now i feel like when you drive from texas to ohio your clothes or your suitcase or your baggage usually goes in the trunk and i could be wrong he could have had a vehicle where he just threw everything in the back seat um because it was just him right so there's a lot of um challenges with this story um my statement is people be careful of who you decide to spend your life with and you know and additionally um just just be careful because this is just really one of those stories like we i i hope that truthfully he's not the culprit um but you know i don't know you know this is this is a pretty intense one is it i mean because they were in the process of getting a divorce this is pretty intense because okay so we all know with news what happens over time inform more and more information comes out Let's just look at the facts. Number one, they were getting a divorce. Number two, he was driving in the car. He was driving in the front seat clearly by himself. His wife was in the trunk dead. When he got stopped, he was unaware that his wife was in the trunk deceased. Um, If I were just to tell this story to a random person with just high-level facts like that, the picture would be almost like pretty like wait a minute they were getting divorced then she's dead in his trunk it, it so i'm going to be really careful but i'm just so you know kira just said it and i'm going to say it again when you're in relationships um number one don't get into a relationship based on the sure pot- the sheer potential of a person or being or based on being lonely if there's some some triggers or there's some things that are like not quite right most of the time those not quite right things never go away they kind of just get big and metastasize and and you can't really run from it like she's saying you know you can't run from some things and you might want to you know the, the the thing is loneliness and the desire for fulfillment and all those things can play could have played a part in all of reason why she married him but i just can't see um, again, and I'm not a specialist or anything like that, but I think that there there could have been a signs that show that he might have had rage, violence, yeah, anger, for sure. or anything that, like that. That wasn't an isolated something. Um, and you know, I'm saying we're getting divorced, and then or we're in a process of getting divorced, and something clicked, like something happened to trigger that type of remo- emotional response. And then you, like you said, there's always something that lets you know something is not right with this particular person. Yeah, and you have to make a a judgment of if you want to actually move forward in the relationship with them For whether sure. that's just marriage friendship boyfriend and girlfriend that's anybody like you just have to make a decision because you know life is too short literally you guys life is so short and precious so why you have the time take the time to get out if that's your situation and you know who you are okay so Doom, doo, doo, doom, our favorite part of society now is when we talk about President Trump. <laughs> I think Allison <laughs> Bullock is amazing. So this particular story is um, it's interesting. I love Comedy Central. I think it's a really great place. It gives really 
great um, commentary on news stories. It's yeah. similar to our format. Um, and Trevor Noah is the host of, you know, a show that I really, really love. I loved it since John Stewart was the host. And he made a, you know, he pretty much said that Donald Trump is everything they thought that a black president would be. Yep. Um, in terms of his character, in terms of his personality, everything, the fear of what a black president would be, this man is living up to it. Literally. Uh, the, the black president was not nowhere near some of the fears that people had. Yeah. And so it's interesting when you sit back and think about it, where um, there was a time in society where white is right and black is bad or whatever, you know, whatever the thought process was that a lot of people feared um, a black president and then it then we had some some years of some turmoil and they were like well well it's okay you know we'll have a black president now and again this is this is not a um this is not meant to be socially charged and racially charged at all it's more of an observation that trevor noah made about you know when you look at it from a comedic standpoint everything that they thought would happen in the past presidency the past presidency in the past um administration excuse me led by you know our former president is it really is what's happening right now what do you think about that so it's interesting because you know we it's true it's true um i think and this is we're just making comments on this particular commentary mm -hmm. right um this is what a lot of blogs a lot of people posted when it was the first African-American president. They thought it was going to be so much division because yeah. it was so, uh, it was a race that has never been represented in office. So, of course, it's going to bring division. It's going to bring all of these negatives. Um, and it's going to really d put a divide with people. Um, but it ended up actually doing the opposite. It really... Um, his presidency um, really pushed on bringing people together. Um, and, and a lot of people did that. This presidency is a little different. Um, it seems like everything that was projected for a president, the, the, the previous president, mm -hmm. is literally all playing out now. Like, you, you're getting, you know, people getting fired left and right. You've got the party being divided. You have, I mean, violence. It seems like, now, of course, I don't want to say it's at an all-time high, but it just seems like the media... There's always something violent, but it seems like killings and all this other kind of stuff, protest, and it seems like it's just always something. So I, I think it's definitely an article that voices definitely have been heard and probably echoes the thoughts of a lot of people. Absolutely. You I know, think, I think it's like I said, I think he hit this one um, as a voice of a people right here on the head. For because sure. It was a thought that a lot of people were having. But of course, he has the platform to talk about it on a nationally syndicated show. So it, it yeah. is interesting that it was brought up. And I thought it was worth worth the worth the chat. No, I agree. Um, now, this is something, Allison, that you really love. Yeah. You yeah, really yeah. love this conversation. I'm going to let her yeah. steal the show on this one because <laughs> she's, there's so many layers to this. And, and I feel like if we do this, we'll never, we'll, you know, we'll so be I'm talking gonna, to you guys the next really, year. I'm going to be really, really quickly, quick about it because okay. before we do the show, just FYI, guys, uh, uh, Kira and I have like a debriefing before. Or, or a review. Or a review. There you go. A, a review know. of over all the different types of the, what we're going to go over and all that kind of stuff. And so we spent quite some time on this. So if you haven't heard, uh, Serena Williams is back in the limelight uh, for controversy. Um, and this time it's not because of her, uh, her body or being overly exposed. It's because of her pregnancy and what she said. Um, she made the comment that being um, having a child, having a baby made her feel like a real woman. And you guys, critics came out the water. They just said, wait a minute. You know, having a baby is, you know, it's a narrow world's view of making you a woman. What about the people who are unable to have children or choose not? Are they not real women? So there are so many layers to this story. So the first thing that I'm going to say, wait, but before I say anything, I think feel like we've got something good coming we do have something we good coming something good i really coming. want to unpack this real quickly but let's talk about the sphere let's because we about love the sphere and so this portion of our show we're going to dive right in but this portion of our show is sponsored by the sphere are you starting your business and looking for a place to advertise do you have a need to reach out to thousands of people across the world to build your brand or sell your product 
If so, get your product placement and advertising needs handled right here at The Sphere. We offer a wide variety of content delivery platforms, including iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Stitcher. Plus, we have a vast demographic reach within the United States as well as modern countries across the globe. Our enriched content and inspiring dialogue, coupled with your strategic and ad, is surely to hit the mark every time. Call us today at area code 832-772-7789. Again, the number is 832-772-7789. Or send an email over to advertise at the sphere.tv. Again, that's advertise at the sphere.tv. TV. So we love the sphere and just really quickly. So everyone's saying shame on Serena and I'm going to say I disagree. I, you know, read a lot of the different comments and actually one of the comments that was written was from a former roommate of mine who is uh, a recent mom and she was like, I think people took this all out of proportion. She said, I have just had a child and I would express myself the same way, not isolating or trying to push anyone out, but it makes you feel like a woman to have a baby and it's personal opinion. But I don't think she meant it malicious. And so in her rebuttal uh, article, she said, number one, I'm a feminist. She said, I'm very pro woman. She said, but I never meant it to attack for those that didn't choose not to woman or saying that you can't be a woman if you don't have a child. And I don't think that was her. Of course, I don't I don't agree. I don't agree that that was her statement or her stance that you're not a woman if you don't have a kid. I just think that there are as as a mother, there are certain parts of my life, even the way I look at life that I did not experience or um, even have a connection to until I became a mom and not necessarily yeah. when I gave birth, but the whole process, that whole process, that connection is something that happens to you um, that, you know, we're going to go ahead and say that it was already predestined. And, and so you have to think it from the perspective of, you know, this woman is very excited right now. This is an exciting time for her. So of course she's overjoyed about having a child. So nothing she says in this, in this um, realm is meant to be malicious. And, and um, my thoughts are, uh, or my concern is extended to those people who um, find found fault in what she said and, or I'm just struggling with the statement because they have desires of their own. Yeah. Um, our prayer is that, you know, that as you're looking for, or, or as you are, um, reconciling or trying to understand, you know, that space of motherhood, having a child, being able to carry a child, whatever the space is that that the offense that that won't offend you, that you actually are. You would actually welcome the joy that she's having at this time, because I think in, the, in welcoming the joy, you can actually share in it a little bit more um, and not look at it as a negative comment, because I don't necessarily think she was trying to down anybody. I don't think she her. Her objective was to make anybody feel like less of anything. It was just the words she used. And, and I don't think it was poor choice of words, but the interpretation of what yeah, sure. were not received well. So I understand it. Yeah. So so this is another thing. Um, I, I want to kind of move around on this one. Um, so I'm, I'll call this one Nine Minutes of Terror. Nine Minutes of Terror. Mm -hmm. um, and um, unfortunately, in California, in San Jose, a young man was stopped for... Um, a traffic violation. The c officer um, did um, ask for his driver's license, and and he w apparently he said he walked back to I guess to write the citation. But when he returned, he uh, he said that he saw the driver and the passenger moving things under the seat, and he felt like he needed to draw his weapon. The issue was with the drawing of the weapon is that he drew the weapon for nine more than nine minutes. This actual clip has been abbreviated; it's been shortened. Um, because, of course, that's a lot of bandwidth right there, mm -hmm. right? And, and you don't really want the horrific, because this is going to be traumatizing for a lot of people. It's going to be traumatizing for a lot of people to see something like this, especially in the wake of so much violence. Um, but nine minutes of sitting there with an officer with a drawn gun, and you're wondering in your mind what's about to happen next. Um, my thought for this was like psychologically my prayers are with the person that was driving and the passenger because that that I think could qualify for PTSD. You know what I mean? That is trauma because this is still happening. We're still watching this. You know, he's sitting there with his hands out like I don't have anything. I don't I don't have anything. You know, unfortunately, you know, again, this someone is recording it. Um, but we thank God that he's OK. Your thoughts, you know, uh, number one. I'm agreeing, at least he's just holding the gun and the gun hasn't been shot. 
sad to say we actually have to say this in this society, but we do. Um, number two, um, again, the environment and just the culture that we're in, the environment that we're in right now, stuff like this is is something that just cannot be tolerated. Absolutely. Um, so again, um, I'm happy um, that they escaped, meaning they came out alive. Absolutely. And again, it's sad to say it because it's because at one point it was like, oh my gosh, the, the police pulled a gun. Now you're like, yeah, he pulled a gun. But oh my gosh, I'm so happy they're alive because there's so many before them that are not alive. So yeah, prayers to them. Now, let's just end our um, show this evening. We're talking about something. I guess it's on a lighter note. Um, mm -hmm. um, and this, for whatever reason, today, our show seems to have really targeted messages. But we call this one Justice Served. Okay. And um, this is about the family of Eric Garner. If you guys remember, Eric Garner was um, a man a few years back um, who was killed, choked out yeah. um, in front of a convenience store, I believe it was, on a corner. Um, the uh, Eric Garner story um, made national headlines. A lot yeah. of people were really upset about how it happened. And um, he was, the family was awarded a huge settlement, $5.9 million wrongful death um, settlement. Um, and, you know, the family members are, his widow was set to get $1.4 million, other family members $1.3 million, you know, and then of course you have court costs and fees and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it it's a, a, you know, it's a victory in that, a court recognized that there was a wrongful death. It's unfortunate, though, that someone had to die um, at all. Um, so I applaud the court system in New York for recognizing the wrongful death um, and, you know, thinking about what happens. Because, of course, you have, you know, the you think about who's going to take care of the child. How does that how does it help his wife? You know, yeah. um, how about his family and yeah. stuff like that? And. You know, you just you think about it from that perspective, like there it wasn't that just a person passed away. It's that a whole family's life has forever been changed and because they have to live with that. Um, and I just want to say this because I know I've talked to I can just hear some people say, you know, it was all about the money. No amount of money brings that person back. From Absolutely death. not. Um, and the reality of it is when things like this um, reach mass media and gets national news coverage you know when money's involved people pay closer attention mm -hmm. because there's a lot of there's a lot before and after Eric Gardner who have died of a, a, a wrongful death and there's been no convictions there hasn't been any any of this so this is progressive and saying you know what this wasn't right this was not right it's we a step a in the right direction. It's a step. In, we as a state recognize that this is not right. We don't condone it. Here's some money, not to bring him back, but we know that, you know, there's still things because I've, I've never had someone that's close to me shot and killed. That's, that's a different, cause people pass away all the time, but when you have somebody that's shot for racial profiling, it takes it to a whole different level. And so, I think, and I think in the Eric Garner case, it wasn't just shooting. I think he actually was. Um, he was the young man that was choked. That's right. That's right. I'm sorry. Yes, choked. that's right. That's he right. Was choked. And this is the one that was, I can't breathe. I, that's right. I can't breathe. That's what the one that was on the floor, and the, the cop kept on pushing, on, pushing down. Yeah. Whew, there's been, I hate to say this, there's been so many deaths, I get them. Yeah, no, no, and it's unfortunate because I'm, I'm sitting here thinking like, I even need to fact check because again, during, it seemed like that the summer was hot. And, and the so summer many, was hot. And it was, seems like, you know, um, you know, it just, it's just really unfortunate. So I just, I'm, I'm grateful that the family has some form of resol resolution of um, what happened to that cho the chokehold that was like, lasted like 19 seconds but that's enough 15 to 19 seconds is enough to uh, take someone out and so this is a like even a i don't know just again justice was served justice definitely was served but we you know we um our prayers are still out to Eric Garner and all the families who have lost someone um due to some of the violence that we see not just 
um, in when persons are on active duty or but also just violence within your neighborhoods, violence against each other, whatever the violence is, we just we don't condone any of it. And so we just want to shed some light on we have to do a better job at protecting ourselves, ourselves being each other. Um, be, and being better caregivers of one another, loving one another and uplifting the community and respecting the authority that's there to protect us. Um, you guys, please take note of everything that Kira just said. That really, really is important because it's it's a bittersweet. It's a bittersweet. It's bittersweet. Um, so with that being said, you guys, you know, the point of society now is to really bring news and content that matters to you. Um, but to invoke riveting content things to you insight insight um so we hope that this did it today uh again uh, so we thank you and we love you and we hope you have an amazing 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 rest of the week again my name is allison bullock and you can follow me on instagram at miranda inc and i am kira laws and you can follow me on instagram at the modern day cindy all right we love you guys and have an awesome night take have care Have an awesome night take care